Hi, my name is John Dunn. Uh, I started playing rock and roll in 1983 in a band called Rough Mix. And we were kind of a party cover band, but I learned how to play bass in that band. Uh, and then after that, let's see, the Master Cylinders in Columbia, South Carolina, three-piece band, that was fun. We used to do Minutemen covers, stuff like that. And then uh, got back down to Atlanta, Georgia at the Star Community Bar. Started up a band called Dragline, surf rock garage band, really good, fun. Just did that for several years. And then uh, it was on to Truckadelic, which was kind of damn near national fame touring band. Then uh, through mutual friends, my good dear buddy Chuck Metaxas, who's a Spoets founder, I guess, one of them, turned me on to the Spoets gig. That's how it all the stars aligned. My old Greek buddy showed me Kung Fu Jesus, and it went from there. I knew Scott at Clemson University in 1983. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, golly, I barely remember those days. <laughs> but, you know. But when I first met Kyriakos, Chuck Metaxas, I thought, who is this prick from Jersey? I couldn't stand him. I said, he's a obnoxious Yankee prick. Well, we became best friends because we were both musicians and salt of the earth, you know? So next generation. And now Bojanovic, Chris Bojanovic was the bass player in that band. He was a badass too. He was there on a wrestling scholarship, I think. And he was Serbian or Croatian? He was Croatian. Of, he's Croatian, okay. He had a little bit of a psycho streak in him, but oh, they were a great band, really good. Mm -hmm. They were almost, they were, they were too ahead of their time for Clemson, South Carolina in the 80s to be handling these young guys that knew how to play the Clash and shit. They, Clemson wasn't ready for them. They played a lot of great shows in Clemson. They did play a lot of great shows, yeah. And good success, too. I mean, yeah, they were great. Golly, I don't know that I remember. We were all under the influence of things probably 1983 at a party somewhere. I never saw the Spoets though. I never saw a Spoets gig. I think the first time I saw some Spoets stuff was up at Chuck's house in Jersey. And what was that? It was video. Video. Oh, I know another, okay. Chucky came to visit me in Atlanta. This was probably about 95 maybe. And he was going up to Raleigh to do the infamous show with Calucifer and all that gang. I think that's when Scumfest '98. Scumfest '98. That would have been it. Yeah, he came to visit me in Atlanta, and then uh, we rode around trying to buy guitars and stuff. And then he took off. He told me about the show, but I didn't know. Uh, I had never seen Spoets live or anything. First Spoets show was in Savannah, wasn't it? Yeah. We rehearsed, we rehearsed, which we don't do, but we had to, because we, we had to tighten up the ship. And that was in Savannah, what, about two, three years ago? 2010. 2010, yeah. 20th anniversary show. I just said, hey man, I can play bass, and uh, I can play bass, there's no doubt about that. But, uh, took it from there. Now what do you remember about uh, Scumfest 2011? 20, 20, 20, or 2010, excuse me. Uh, I know for a fact that if you're going to play a rock and roll gig wearing a Mexican wrestling, Mexican wrestling mask, you're going to get hot. And I took that thing up because I couldn't play anymore in it. And then I remember some, uh, some kind of very ad-lib moments of glory and moments of noise. And I remember fire and... Then I remember Tardate cutting his hand open on a piece of uh, broken glass, and it was pretty scary. I was like, man, you need to go to the hospital, dude. And that was rough. And hanging out with Kurt. How, how was cool. Kurt? Kurt was cool. I was drunk as a skunk. Because I got, see, this is where we went wrong. I was invited, or I, I'm, I try to get to places on time. So I got there on time thinking we were going to rehearse. Well... That didn't happen, so I started drinking about two that afternoon. I got pretty fucked up by midnight, and then we had to go on, but it it, it shined on. So drinking with the spouse is pretty pretty much good as a rehearsal. 
it's easy. It's good. Yeah, it, it's fine. You know, you can't overdo it, but you want to under, you know, you want to, you want to mind your, you know, p's and q's, so to speak. So, what would you say about the Spoets girls? I say we need more of them and younger and hotter ones and more naked and more dildo penetration live. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. <laughs> more of them. But you, but you got drunk and missed the 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 orgy after the the um, uh, Savannah gig. That's not quite true. <laughs> I did actually walk in and observe and smell some of the orgy for a second, but uh, it was just kind of overwhelming. I said, "I'm gonna go get my tent." You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, it was some some Spartacus type shit there for a second. The most outrageous thing I've seen would have to be the. Um, grand finale at the Scumfest show. Um, the exploding suicide titty vest. That was pretty much outrageous. Although, it was better to see it on video after the fact, because then I could really see what the hell was going on. So what was it like living through it? Scary. I knew to stay back away and kind of up by the drummer and out of the chaos because I don't like getting hurt, man. I just don't. I just don't like hospital emergency room trips, and I didn't want to get into being injured. So, did you think uh, you think that something was going to go terribly wrong with that stunt? Well, you know, you got angle grinders and exploding titties and shit like that, and I said, man. I'm going to stand the fuck back and just play this bass line over and over and over, which is exactly what I did. Try to hold some uh, sense of cohesiveness to it all.